What's going on guys? John Alder here from Codemy.com and in this video, I'm going to show you some cool things about the controller for our friends list app with Ruby on Rails. Alright guys, like I said, in this video we're going to look a little bit more at the controller, but before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos to teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. That's all my courses, videos and books for one time via just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, we are coming right along with our friends list app. And there's not a whole lot more to do. We can tinker with a few things here and there. But the main functionality is done. The look and feel is pretty good. In this video, I want to kind of take a step back from the project itself and just talk about the controller and explain some fun things we can do with it and show you how to do it on this app. So up until now, we've messed around with the controller, but I haven't talked about it in great detail. And remember, Rails is a model view controller framework. The model is the database, the views are the pages, and the controller is sort of like the brains behind the scene. And we've seen some controller stuff up, stuff up until now. If we head over to our code and go to app, controllers, you see we have two controllers, the home controller, the one that was generated for us when we first created our app. It has two methods, the index method and the about method. These relate to the index page and the about page. Then we also have our friends controller, and this was created for us when we generated our friends scaffold that takes care of all the database stuff. And we've tinkered with this file before. We did a few things in it, and we added some stuff. But mostly it has an index method, a show, a new, an edit, create, update, destroy. We created this correct user. And then there's some private ones down here, friends, params. These are the fields of the database. Like when you're filling out the form to add a friend, the params are the different input boxes and things like that. And uh, that's cool. And each of these correspond to a different cred element, create, read, update, and destroy, which correspond to the specific pages for adding a new friend, uh, deleting a friend, updating a friend, and all that good stuff. So like I said, we've played around with this a little bit. You can see here's where this is making a call to the database. It's grabbing all of the friends designating it to this friends instance variable. And then on our index page, we can use that friends index or that friends instance variable to call whatever is in the database. And if we look at our index page for our friends, we can go to app views and then on our friends, look for index. You'll see whenever we call the database, it's calling at friends, right? And that's just that. Let's see, go back here. It's just this variable right here. So sort of what I want to talk about in this video. We're not going to deal with the friend stuff because that's all complicated. But let's head over to our home controller. And here we've got our about method. And here we can put stuff that will appear on the about page. If we go back over to our app, remember up here, we've got this about page, it just says about us, there's nothing really in there. Uh, but uh, we've got this thing. And so let's play around with this. Now, like I said, the controller is sort of like the brains behind everything, you can write any kind of code in here you want you can write Ruby code that does anything you want. So it's really cool. Like everything you do here can get passed on to the web page itself by using an instance variable and just pushing whatever output you want. So inside of here, you could write, like I said, any kind of Ruby code, you could call an API from another website using a, a get request or something, and pull data in parse it, and then put it out on this page, you can do anything you want. So any kind of program you want to do, you can do it in this function, and then that will correspond to that page. So uh, here we can just go, let's create an instance variable about me. And let's just say, you know, my name is John Elder, dot, 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 right? So now this about me instance variable, and it's an instance variable, because it has a little at sign in front of it. Ruby has regular variables too, you could go, you know, about me, but this is a local variable that will just work in this function. Whereas this guy is an instance variable, it will work everywhere, like on our home page, right? So we've got this about me instance variable, we can copy this. Now we can go to our about page. So let's go to let's see app views, not friends, but we want home. And then here's our about page. And right here, all we have is this about us, right? So if we wanted to, we could put a little p tag. And inside of here, we could write some embedded Ruby, right? And we've seen these embedded Ruby tags before. And in here, we could just paste in that variable, right? So if we save this, head back over here, and hit reload, 
boom, we get my name is John Elder right on the screen. Now, this is obviously a kind of a silly example because, you know, we could have just wrote my name is John Elder, but it's just a way to show you that anything we put in our controller, any kind of code whatsoever, we can pass it to the corresponding page that that method refers to. And just remember, you know, for each, so we're in our home controller, this about method corresponds obviously with the about page. The index method corresponds with the index page, right? So that's really all there is to it. And we can do, like I said, anything we want in this controller. So let's go back to our home controller. We could just do math, right? So uh, to, let's say um, answer equals two plus two, right? So this is the answer is obviously four. Two plus two is four, right? This is just some silly basic coding. But we can now pass that to our uh, about page, right? So we can say, let's put this on another line. We could say two plus two equals, and then we can output our answer, right? If we save this, head back over here, hit reload, boom, two plus two equals four. Right, so now obviously this is not, again, very sophisticated code. Back to our home controller, two plus two, right? But you could have pages of code in here, right? I mean, hundreds of lines of code if you really wanted to. Or you could have a different file holding that stuff and you could reference it in the same way you reference other files in, in any Ruby code, right? So very, very powerful way to have Ruby basically working on a web page. Now, Right, we can do regular Ruby on, on a page itself, right? We could go inside of here. We could go, uh, let's see, answer equals two plus two. Right, and then here we could go we can output answer, right? And maybe here we would go two plus two equals Save this, come back over here, hit reload. Again, we get the same two plus two equals four. So let's change this around, and make sure that actually worked. So let's go two plus three. So here we can change this to three. So now our answer should be five. All right, two plus three equals five. You can do it that way, right? Obviously. And sort of like Django and Python, you can do. Python type things in the actual code of your HTML page, just like we're doing right here. Notice we didn't have this equal to sign because we're not printing that on the screen. We're just doing code in this embedded Ruby tag. But, you know, best practices are not to put your, let's call it operating code on your views, on your HTML pages. You want to abstract this away as much as you can somewhere else. And the HTML itself should just be HTML, right? So this is a way to keep your sort of hardcore code somewhere else, for instance, in this controller, and still get access to it on your actual page. So very, very cool. And just something to keep in mind when you're working with Ruby on Rails. And if you need to do any sort of coding, any hardcore coding, you could do it in your controller and then pass it using these instance variables onto the page where you can reference it just like that. And it's super easy and super cool. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codeme.com where you can use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 on membership. Save pages $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses now, hundreds of videos and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codeme.com and I'll see you in the next video.